Good evening, America. This is Joshua Mason coming to you live. Berkeley, California, the autumn equinox at 6 p.m., 54 minutes before the official equinox as we transition into fall. I am feeling a... Man, this dude has the oldest cars here. The neighbors must absolutely hate him. He's got one, two, three, four. That's number five over there that he's driving. Oh, there's six. And they're all just on the street. He's just taking up a shitload of space on the street. And when he drives these, it smells so bad. Tons of fumes. Man, the neighbors just have to hate him. I think he's probably just been here for the longest, so. Anyway. Compassion and love to all beings. Fucking idiot. <laughs> I go back and forth between those two uh, spaces quite often. Oh, he's doing the best he can. Oh, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> anyway. I am feeling the nice diesel fumes. And... Should we steal a lemon? I think we should steal a lemon. Ooh, there aren't any close by. Hmm, oh well. Okay. Back to the point here. Berries. Blackberries and raspberries. Oh my, I wouldn't eat these just because there's so many cars that are driving on this road, releasing fumes. Other than that, they'd be great. Okay, back to business. Ooh, more lemons. I love California. Okay, back to business. Ooh. Apples. <laughs> I'm really not trying to do this. I'm really not purposely doing this. Okay, back to business. So, I am feeling a pleasant, calm, tired, content feeling. Um, you know, I don't know the order of the order of the videos and it, sometimes they don't come out in order. So it's not an exact story of my life that you're seeing accurately. Sometimes you'll see a video that I posted that and I filmed it two hours before I posted it. Other times you'll see a video from that I filmed the week prior. But <clears throat> the truth is that in the past month or so, I filmed a video on it already, I was in this funky space. I wasn't in a real happy space. Um, there, were, I didn't have to, there was no depression. There was no, none of that stuff that, you know, so like rest assured, you know, I am healed, right? My point is that, you know, there are people who message me when I talk about, actually, this has really only happened a couple of times. I shouldn't say people, but when I talk about like going through shit, it's almost like people assume, what's up, buddy? Hi. You're on camera. It's like people assume that because I'm detoxed that I don't go through shit. And let me tell you, man, some anyone, any teacher that claims to have all the answers, run the fuck as far away as you can. Anyone who claims to not go through issues and stuff, they are just simply not digging deep enough. They have plateaued 
because this onion goes deep, my friends. And there's no such thing as the end of the journey. There's no such thing as being healed. There's no such thing as not going through shit. So, I've been going, I was going through shit. I was really going through something. I'm at like the precipice right now, the final sort of piece of it uh, as I move into a new phase of my life and figures it's right on the equinox. It's beautiful. But the, the, the shit that I was going through was just this, this overwhelming desire to be successful, okay? Um, a lot of people will maybe say that that's healthy. A lot of people will maybe say, some people maybe say that it's ego. Some people maybe say that it's what drives me, right? And maybe it's a little bit of all of those. But the truth is that that desire uh, to be successful owned, owned me, okay? I wasn't in control and it had power over me. Now, life's not about control, right? So I don't want that to be the ultimate sort of goal here. But I wasn't free. I was, uh, uh, I've been at times and phases of my life a slave to my own desires for success, my own desires to bring this movement to the next level, my own sort of graspy attempts at, at being uh, successful. And then, you know, I ask myself, what is success, right? Why is it that I'm stuck and and not so stuck anymore but i was stuck in this followers subscribers you know emails sales these digital metrics that i'm judging myself on and analyzing my progress in life based on these digital metrics that mean nothing so i could talk more about the storm for hours but and the shit that i went through but it's it's fizzled out it's not so real for me anymore because um, I, I hit this beautiful uh, turning point. And a lot of it had to do with the beautiful comments that you guys left me um, on my last Walking With video when I asked, why do you follow me? Like, I was so fucking blown away by the comments and remembered why I do what I do. Like, you guys don't understand. Like you know, those com- like comments and feedback is so crucial to someone who does this for a living, you know? And so, so those comments like made my fucking, made me high, but in a good way, in a clean way. And it just, re- I remembered, wow, this is why I do what I do. This is who I am. This is what this movement is about. It's not about an image-based sort of, I'm fucking real, you know? I'm not bringing you an image. I'm not bringing you a, I don't want hero worshipers. I don't want people who think that, that this is a, a quick fix or a magic pill. There are no magic pills in this world, ladies and gentlemen. If you find one, give me a call. Send me an email, ask for my cell phone number, and call me. And I'll be the judge if that was really a magic pill or not. Or if maybe you just feel better this week. But in my experience, and I've searched far and wide in the corners of different pills, supplements, herbs, modalities, meditations, a lot of drugs, a lot of hallucinogens, a lot of drugs, natural and herbal, a lot of shamans, a lot of healers, a lot of sticking things up my bum, and I have never found a quick fix. This healing process is slow, steady, marathon that sometimes goes up and sometimes goes down and it's, it's a little bit of a spiral on its way towards you becoming more whole, more complete, more solid and grounded and contain more love and spirit in your being. So,
So the, the storm that has since subsided, it came to this beautiful boiling point where I was just, I mean, I spent days in this state of mind of like, ah, what the fuck? Like this, I wasn't actually speaking like this, but internally just like, what the fuck? What am I supposed to do? How do I, do I do retreats? Do I, do I, what do I, what am I supposed to sell? What am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to be on this YouTube channel? It, it's just this gymnastics, gymnastics, gymnastics. And, and, and how do I get more successful? And, and I just hit this boiling point. It was so stressful. So it was so overwhelming and nauseating to my being to be in the state of mind that it's literally took that level of n neuroses and, and gymnastics in order for me to look at it as an entire paradigm that needs, needed to be cracked. It was like I was in this world jumping back and forth through my, through these gym, mental gymnastics and back and forth, back and forth. This is right. No, this is right. No, I should be this way. No, I should be that way. And I literally had to take the whole fucking model and like a virus and pull it out. The whole thing. The whole thing was bogus. Neither A nor B was correct. The answer was C, none of the above. <laughs> um, and I had to take, it had to get to that place for me to recognize this space of consciousness that I could choose to live from. And I believe a lot of people do live from it. It's not that that will ever be purged or, or sort of, it's not that that avenue or pathway will never be available to me. That's a pathway that I can always so choose to live through. But what I realized so clearly, and I'm getting so many messages from the universe that it's the wrong way for me because it always has been. See, I never got, I never got what I wanted in life by chasing. I always, things always came to me. I, I had to meet things maybe halfway, sometimes 20%, 10% of the way, but all of the best things that ever came into my life, they honestly just came. They fell into my lap and I was doing the right things and I was making the right noises and I was saying, do, you know, taking care of myself. So the universe wanted to help me, but the truth is that for me, which is different for every personality type and every, every spirit is different, but for me, it's more of a gentle receive. I need to learn how to be Venusian, which is receptive. If you watch a woman in a bar, okay? Yeah, we got a biker here. Yeah. Scared me a little bit. If you watch a woman in a bar, okay? She's could be sitting on the, at the bar, hardly moving. One may call her passive, but in truth, she's doing 50 different little slight nuances and subtle things to be more attractive, to have, to, to be, if she's, if she's wanting to be approached, there are all different kinds of things that she can do in order to, to be approached. So it's really not passivity. It's, I mean, it's conscious, it's, it's like conscious passivity, you know, it's, it's, it's Venusian. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, that's the expression. In truth, we are both both. We all have both. And to really be in balance is like when you watch someone walking down the street and they're like, it looks like they're making love to themselves in their own body, that's when someone is in balance, right? The Mars is like go-getting, right? If I was in Mars mode right now, you know, like I'm exaggerating, but you know, yeah. So what you got to do is you got to do the push-ups, and you got to fucking get after the ladies. Okay. And you got to just ask her out on a date, just ask her out on a date. Okay. And then there's like the Venusian, right? Where it's just more like flowy and like, you know, consciously passive. Ah, oh, the universe will bring to me whatever it is that I need to see right now. You know, it's flowy, receptive. And to be in balance, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'm working on it. But when you see someone in balance, it's like a, truly like they're making love to themselves. And, and it's almost like they're, they're complete as they are. 
They don't need anything. They don't need anyone to complete them or at, or they don't need any uh, missing half, missing pieces. So um, so I move towards this more Venusian energy, which is many years of unwinding uh, the main paradigm, which is the my Mars go-getting attitude. And all of these beautiful things come into my life. I met an incredible woman. I've been getting tons of clients, tons of requests, podcast opportunities. I was on, <laughs> actually, I don't want to say too many details. of A lot of these things are in process, so I'm not going to say what they are. But big fucking, big fucking opportunities have come into my lap. Okay, potential life-changing opportunities. Eh, life-changing, who knows, you know? At the end of the day, I'm still me walking in this body. No matter how big this business gets or no matter how much money I make or no matter how many people I help, at the end of the day, I got to be in this body with my own thoughts and my own consciousness, walking on the same street in the same shoes. So, life-changing, strong word. But, nonetheless, huge opportunities, and they all came in this, like, five-day period of time where I just decided to literally have my computer off. Like I just, I literally put my computer and my cell phone in the laundry room, turn them both off, put them in the laundry room. I would check them for like 10 minutes a day for three or four days in a row and make a few posts and post on YouTube and shut it down as opposed to the usual hours and hours and hours of rummaging through all of the different channels and mastering trying to figure everything out and and optimize and 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 so and then all these things came my way and this is the universe's way of letting us know when we're doing something that's in tune and in sync with with mother earth see i was out of sync and the craziest thing is it's almost like people know when when someone's out of sync like I was, I, I was, it was radio silent on clients for like a two weeks. That was the longest period of time I ever experienced. Uh, I mean, maybe I had a couple of clients, small little things here and there interspersed, but you got to understand for two and a half years, this movement has been fucking like straight up, like never, there's never a dull moment. I r- rarely in two and a half years did I ever did anything ever slow down? And this was like the first sort of pit stop I ever experienced. And I was freaking the fuck out. I was like, is this movement dead? Am I going down with the ship? Has detox come to its time? So, so, and, and during that time is when I was at the max unrest, the max internal unrest was during that time. So it's people subconsciously pick up on that and there's no space in your field for beautiful uh, diamonds to appear and it's down for you. It's it's like, it's like your plate is full. You're dealing with this thing. You're in, uh, I'm saying you, me, I was in negativity. I was in fear. I was in lack and the universe just says, okay, let's just keep, let's just keep sending him that signal that he's putting out there. Let's just keep matching him with that same signal. And And as soon as I surrendered, it was just like, whoa, whoa, take a step back, Josh. Why did you start doing this in the first place? What are your motives? Why do your fans follow you? What do you love to do? Concentrate on the art, the art. It's all about the art. I was thinking about followers and subscribers. Fuck that. I got to concentrate on the art. What's the art? This, my voice, my art going into the camera, doing my writing, conveying my message. That's my art, at least right now. I would love to deepen it and, and, and bring it to, into different forms because I really do feel like an artist in this world. But my art is this, and I got to concentrate on the art, on the flow, and everything else will fall into place. And as soon as I had that realization, it was like a voice inside of me that was just like, Focus on the art. A great artist is never worrying about the end result and like what people are going to think about his painting. The artist is so fucking in flow and so 
captivated by his own his own state of consciousness and the forces that he's connecting to and the pen and the paper and the canvas and whatever and the music and the instrument that it all that other stuff is secondary and i lost my art i lost i i lost touch with my art okay so so yeah getting back in touch with that flow check out See if I can get a close up of these little guys. Deer usually let me get pretty close actually. But with this little machine in my hands, they probably think I'm gonna shoot them. Anyway. So, I really got in touch with, <laughs> there's three more, this must be a whole family. Oh, fourth, there's like seven now. Boom. Little guy over here, little guy over here. Leave me a comment. What do you think about these walking with videos? <laughs> Just after I get done saying that the artist doesn't give a fuck about what his audience think. By the way, guys, let me know what you think about this video. Nah, I mean, yeah, you could let me know or not. Whatever. Anyway. Um, so. Yeah. Got back in touch with my flow. I spent those days away from the Internet, which if the Internet is a fucking shitstorm let me tell you i really believe the internet is frying our brain not not the internet okay it's not the internet that's doing it it's our relationship to the internet see back 40 years ago 50 years ago our relationship to the world was so much different than it is today we have so much available to us information and sort of um in this school that I work with, it's called Astral, okay? So astrally, astrally, there's so much information that we can plug into and tap into. It's very easy to get overloaded and it's very easy to be living in that world full time. See, when you're just in your day, if you lived on a farm and your day would consist of the land, the sun, the moon, everything would be much less digitized. and that's not to say that the technology, technological world is wrong or bad, but we're out of balance now. I was out of balance. And I was too much in that world and not in my body and in my etheric and in my energy, just simply feeling what was happening around me, being present to my environment. It's like I would do a coffee enema and I was just thinking about YouTube. I'm not actually doing the coffee enema in, in that case, you know? So... So I just realized that so much of uh, uh, these problems, they can't actually be solved at the level of the problem. Meaning we can't solve this, this concept by ruminating on the other uh, uh, opposing arguments. It's almost like we have to step out of it entirely, hence coming more deeply into our bodies. You know, there's this space that I get into where it's this resting space and it's, oh, all of that fucking mental chatter and that noise was noise. Most of it, if not all of it, doesn't need to be resolved. I don't actually need to do anything. Right? So, so yeah, it's, it's really about, for me, I'm learning about this balance. Just being in the body, being out in nature, not trying to make things happen, just simply living. Just simply living. And believe it or not, guys, believe it or not, it is now two and a half years since I escaped that fucking nightmare. And I still have conditioning around being happy. 
I tell you, there are times when I could lay and be so content in my home, looking at the trees and my garden and the hummingbirds. And this little voice kicks in that says, happy, how could you be happy? You know how much suffering is, on the world, is in the world? You better get off your ass and do something about it. Happy, man, you were just two years ago, you were just dying. Who knows, maybe you'll go back there. Content, you can't be content, man. Don't you understand? Life is tough. Life is hard and life is nothing but struggles and you gotta make a living and you gotta be productive. And much of the time, I don't listen to this voice. But there are times when that voice gets me off that fucking couch. And, and, and that's what I'm working on right now. Unraveling the conditioning around being happy. We're so, we have to give ourselves permission to be happy and content. Absolutely have to. Ooh, let's be quiet for the golfers here. Let's see what he's got going on. into the street. So, I'm wrapping up here, getting to my final message here. Um, I was talking about Yeah, conditioning, conditioning around happiness. We have to give ourselves that space. I'm working on this myself. When that joy kicks in, just let it kick in. We deserve it, it's our birthright. It'll only help the world. We don't need to be productive all the time and joy. It's actually our natural homeostasis. Obstacles come and they go, but our natural homeostasis should be this slight hum of joy and love, and not overly high, and not low, this middle hum, okay? Masters live in the middle, I really believe that. Anytime I hear, I watch people on YouTube, or any teachers, if they feel high to me, they're out. Because I have seen time and time and time again what goes up must come down. I've never seen a master living in that high space. So allow yourself to feel that middle hum of love. And I talk to myself here and just don't get up off the couch when that's, when that's there. <laughs> don't listen to the conditioning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, battery's dying. Perfect timing. I'm out. Peace.